Hello and welcome back to this tutorial from Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to use the levels tool inside of Affinity Photo. So let's start off here by going to file and you can either go to open to open up a photo or in my case I'll go to open recent and I'm actually going to open up a raw photo except we're not going to edit this inside of the develop persona. So let me click on this. You'll see what I mean in a second. So here my image is opened up inside the raw persona and I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to editing raw photos inside of Affinity Photo. But for this particular photo, we're just going to come over here and hit develop. That will now open up our raw photo inside of the photo persona. For those of you opening up JPEG images, this should open up automatically inside of your photo persona. So once your photo is opened up, come over here to the layers panel and make sure you're clicked on whatever image layer you want to add the adjustment to. So in this case, we only have one layer. That's going to be our background layer, which is of course our image layer. And I'll come down here. You'll see this icon says adjustments. When I click on that, that's going to open up a list of the potential adjustments. The very top one is going to be the levels adjustment. So when I click on that, that's going to bring up my levels dialog. And this of course is where I can edit my levels. If that didn't work for you guys, you can also come over to the adjustment panel here. And the very first option is going to be your levels option. Just double click on that. That will also open up the levels dialog here. And if I come back to the layers panel, it adds that adjustment layer on top of your image. By default, your levels tool is going to be in whatever color space your document is in. So in this case, we have an RGB image, which means my levels are set to the RGB color space. However, you can change this to another color space. So this can actually be independent of what your actual image is set to. For example, I could set this to CMYK if I'm getting this ready for print and I can make adjustments to my image based on that CMYK color mode. And you'll see by changing the color space or the color mode, it changes the histogram as well. Let's go back to the RGB color space though. This is what I'm going to use for this photo. And referencing the histogram again, you'll see there is a white graph here on the histogram. Then you'll see there is a green area, a blue area, and a red area. So these four different graphs on the histogram are going to represent the four different channels you can edit here. So the white graph is going to be your master channel. That's going to be the composited image or all three color channels combined. That is going to allow you to adjust the tonal value of your image or in other words, the brightness and contrast. Then you have the three color channels. So red, green, and blue. Each one of those on here on your histogram gets a graph. And you can think of these little graphs as bar graphs and each bar is going to represent the number of pixels. The far left side is going to be the darker tones in your image. The far right side is going to be the lighter tones. So as you can see, there's a lot of blue in some of the brighter pixels in our image. Decent amount of green as well in some of the slightly lighter pixels. And then if we go to the far left in the shadows, you'll see we also have a decent amount of red there behind the green and then also the green, of course. And because the actual master channel is pretty low on the histogram, that means this image isn't super bright as we can tell. And the darkest pixels of our image start pretty far to the right, which means we don't have a ton of pure black pixels, which we're going to get into as we edit these. So we're going to start on the master channel by default, which is going to be this white graph here. And the first option here is going to be to adjust the black level. And whenever you adjust the black level, you are shifting the black point of your image. The black point is going to be the point at which dark pixels in your image are deemed pure black. So if we come over here to the black level slider and we drag this to the right, that's increasing the number of pixels in our image that are considered pure black. And what that's going to do is darken our image overall. So you can see that as we continue dragging this to the right, our image is getting darker and darker. That's because more and more pixels are becoming pure black pixels. So we don't want to overdo this as we start to lose a lot of details. So typically what you want to do is just drag this until you're pretty happy with the amount of pure black pixels in your image. And if I hold the alt key, that's actually going to show me any pixels in my image that are getting clipped. So in other words, any shadow parts of my image that are becoming pure black and therefore the details are getting lost. So you can see that right here around his suit, the dark part of his suit, when we drag the black level too far to the right, it starts to clip some of those shadows in there. So we're losing too much detail. 
So if once again I hold the Alt key, I can basically drag this until I'm not getting any clip shadow, so right about there. And that's going to allow us to darken this image without creating too many clip shadows and therefore losing too many details. So the white level is basically going to be the opposite. This is going to allow us to shift the white point of the image or allow us to add more pure white pixels to the image. So obviously the more pixels that we deem to be pure white, the brighter the image is going to be overall. And let me just demonstrate. So when I drag this to the left, you'll see once again, we have a line here. We had a line over here as well with the black level. So as we drag this to the left, that's adding more pure white pixels, especially in these highlight areas. So everything to the right of this line here is now going to be considered a pure white pixel. So you can see how many pixels are here inside of our histogram. So dragging this to the left is adding more and more pure white pixels until we get a totally washed out image there. And once again, if I hold the Alt key, that's going to show me the clipped highlights. So you can see that as I continue dragging this, we're getting more and more clipped areas. So what I recommend doing is just basically either dragging this to the point where you're comfortable with the amount of clipped highlights, or you can just simply release that and do the eye test. So whatever looks good to your eye. In this case, because we already have the histogram shifted to the right, we don't really need to add any more pure white pixels to this in the same way we needed to add some pure black pixels. But if I move this out of the way and we come over here to the levels adjustment, we can use this little check mark here to do a preview. So there's a before, there's an after. You could see just by shifting that black level, we've added some contrast to this. The next slider is the gamma slider. This is either going to brighten or darken the midtones of the image. So if I drag this to the left, we are going to brighten the midtones. And if I drag the slider to the right, we're going to darken the midtones. So of course, when we brighten the midtones overall, that's going to brighten the image up, but it'll also flatten it out a little bit. And when we drag it to the right, that's going to darken these, which will darken the image overall, which does tend to add a bit more contrast. So it's sort of a trade-off. Do you want more details coming from the midtones or do you want more contrast? So depending on what you want to do, you can release that gamma. So anything below one will be shifting to the left or brightening the midtones there. Anything above one is going to darken the midtones. Below the gamma slider is the output black level and output white level sliders. These are going to change the value of our pure black and pure white pixels. So if I were to drag this value to the right, that's going to brighten up the pure black pixel value, which is just going to brighten up the image overall. The reasoning behind that is that the very darkest pixels of our image are now slightly brighter. So these black areas here aren't going to be quite as dark now. And then the output white level slider, if I drag this to the left, that's going to darken the pure white value of our image. So you can see what's happening here is we're basically removing contrast overall in our image because we're taking away the amount of difference between the pure white pixels and the pure black pixels. So if you wanted to leave those values as they are, you can just leave these values set to zero and 100%. If you want the black pixels, for example, to be slightly lighter, bring that value up and the white pixels to be slightly darker, you can bring that value down. So all of the levels adjustments we've done so far in this video have been on the master channel. That basically only affects the tonal value of our image. We can also use the levels tool to adjust the colors of our image, and we can do that by changing the channel that we're editing to one of the color channels. So up top here, we are set to the master channel. We can click on this, and for starters, let's go with the red color channel. So the same values are going to apply here with the sliders, except instead of either brightening the photo or darkening it, either in the shadows or the highlights of the image, now what we're doing is either adding red or adding cyan to the image. So the first slider here is the black level slider. If I were to drag this to the right, we are going to add cyan to the shadows of the image. So you can see that's allowing us to adjust the color here. If I get intense with it, you can see how much cyan is added. So basically it's saying all of the pixels to the left of this line are now going to be cyan. And of course that's way too much. So we're going to decrease that amount. Once again, if I hold the alt key, we can sort of see any clipping going on with the reds inside of those shadow areas. So if that's a big deal to you, you can keep that on. It's not to me. So I'll turn it off there. 
and I'll release right there. On the other hand, the white level slider is either going to add red to the shadows if I drag it to the left, or it's going to add cyan back to the shadows if I bring that back to the right. So let me drag this back to the left. So all of these pixels from the right of this line onward are gonna be red now, and then everything to the left will remain cyan for the most part. So the further we drag the white level to the left, the more reds are added to the highlights of the image as well as just the image overall, depending on how far we go. But this is mainly meant to add red to the highlights of the image. So you can see that effect happening there when we are more subtle with this. The gamma is going to once again work on the midtones of the image. So if I drag this to the left, we're adding a bit more red to the midtones. If I drag it to the right, we're adding cyan to the midtones. And by the way, I do want to point out that adjusting the tonal values as well as the colors of your image is a subjective process. So your tones and colors don't have to look like my photo here. They can look however you would like them to look. Moving on to the output black level slider now, you'll remember on the master channel, this was used to brighten the pure black pixels in our image. Well, for the red channel, this is more so used to add red to the shadows of your image. So you can see here, as I drag this to the right, we're adding more and more red, especially to the shadows. So let's bring this back over. We'll just add a tinge of red and release. And the output white level slider, on the other hand, is basically going to add cyan to the highlights of the image. So you can see the more I bring this to the left, the more cyan is being introduced. So let's bring that back over. Basically, these sliders here are going to do the opposite work of what's going on up here. So let's move over here to the green channel now. So this is going to be the same exact principles, except instead of adding red and cyan, we're going to be adding green and magenta. So at the very top here, when we drag the black level slider to the right, we're adding magenta to the shadows of the image, and that's helping to remove some of the green. The white level slider is going to add green to the highlights. That helps to remove the magenta there. And of course, I can hold the Alt key to see if I'm clipping anything here. The gamma slider allows you to either add green to the midtones or add magenta. So if I shift this to the left, you'll see we're getting green in the midtones there. Shift it to the right, we're getting magenta. Again, it's going to be up to you how you want this to look. If you purposely want this to look more green overall, you can slide this over to the left. Moving on to the output black level slider, this is going to either add green to the shadows or add magenta to the highlights. And finally, let's move on to the blue color channel. So again, same principles, except now we're either adding blue or adding yellow. So coming over here to the black level slider, when I bring this value to the right, we're adding yellow to the shadows of the image, and that's helping to get rid of maybe some excess blue going on there. And let's just drag this all the way to the right. You can see what happens there. We get a very yellow image, which is not what we want. So let's come back. And the white level is either going to add blue to the highlights if we move this to the left, or it's going to add yellow if I move this back to the right. However, if you just want to add a tinge of blue to the highlights for whatever reason, you can just drag the slider slightly to the left. So once again, here we're working on the midtones. Dragging to the left, we're adding blue. Dragging to the right, we're adding yellow. And then below that, we have the output black level. So dragging this to the right, we're adding blue to the shadows now, which is going to be the opposite of what was happening up here. And down here, the output white level, we're adding yellow to the highlights. And there you can see the final effect. Let's come over here and just click this check mark again. There's a before, there's an after. And some of you may have noticed there was another channel here called Alpha. This is going to be for transparency. In this case, we don't have any transparency visible here. And that's going to be pretty typical with your standard photo editing. You're not going to have transparency on here unless you're doing some sort of manipulation or maybe, you know, blending multiple photos together. But when it comes to standard levels adjustments, you're not really going to use the Alpha channel. So let's come back to the master channel. And I want to demonstrate the features down here at the bottom. So first off, in the lower left corner, you have your opacity slider. Right now, this is set to 100%, which just means our levels adjustments are going to be fully visible with our image layer. But if we wanted to lessen the effects here, we can come down to the opacity slider and, for example, drag this to the left. 
So that's making the levels adjustments more and more transparent until we get to 0% which then means there are no levels adjustments on here because they are totally transparent. So as I turn this back up, we are adding those effects back. So this just allows you to sort of decrease the amount of the effect if you want it to maybe be a bit more subtle there. But I'm gonna keep this set to 100%. The blend mode allows you to change how the levels adjustment interacts with the image layer below. So you can hover your mouse over each blend mode here and you can see that that's going to change how your levels adjustments interacts with the layer below. And then if you wanted to have more advanced options here with how your levels adjustments were blending with the image below, you could click this little gear icon to bring up the blend ranges. And here you have some more control over how your levels are blending with the image below. I'm not gonna get too much into this feature for this tutorial, but what I will tell you is that the left side of this graph here is going to be the darker tones in your image. The right side is going to be the brighter tones. The left graph itself is going to be your levels. And the right graph is going to be the original image below your levels. And I know this is getting complicated here, but the top portion of the graph represents full opacity and the bottom portion is full transparency. So remember, this is the dark portions of the image. If I drag this down to the bottom, this basically says that the shadows of the image are now going to be totally transparent, or in other words, the shadows of our image will not contain the levels adjustments. So watch when I bring this back up, you'll see the levels will return to those darker portions of our image. You can always right click if you want to delete one of those points if you accidentally create a new point like I just did. So there you can see when I bring that all the way back up, the level is now fully returned to the shadows. Let's do this with the highlights now. So we'll come over here to the right side and as we drag that down, you'll see the levels will now leave the highlighted areas of the image. And if I drag that back up, that's going to bring those back. So the right side basically uses the same principle except you are adjusting the actual photo itself. So basically you're saying, I don't want the levels to be applied to the shadowy portions of the image. So when I turn this down, it's basically doing the same thing. It's getting rid of the levels adjustments inside of the shadowy areas of the image. So I'm gonna exit out of here because I don't wanna get too much into that. But finally, I do wanna cover the buttons at the top. So the merge button is going to merge your effects with the image layer below. So as I mentioned, this is an adjustment layer, which actually makes this non-destructive because we can go back at any time, double click on the adjustment layer and continue to make adjustments to the settings inside the levels tool. But if for whatever reason we wanted to merge the levels down with the image layer, we can click that merge button. That will make these levels adjustments destructive. So I don't recommend doing that. The delete button is just going to basically cancel out any of your levels adjustments. So it'll exit out of here without actually applying the levels to this. And then the reset button will just bring you back to the start. So it's basically like undoing your levels adjustments. Finally, if you wanted to save all of your adjustments as a preset, you can click add preset. And here you can see we can name our preset. So I'll just name this DMD1 and click OK. And now we have that preset, which I'll show you how to add to your image in a second. But if we did want to add these levels adjustments to our image, all I have to do is come over here and exit out of here. And now we have our levels adjustment layer. And that is being applied to whatever image layers are below it, which in this case is just going to be our image layer. So again, you can come over here and preview this. So there's a before, there's an after. So let's say you wanted to open up a similar image and save some time by adding that preset you just created. Here's what you would do. Let's start by deleting this levels adjustment. So we're back to our original image. I can come over here to the adjustment panel or the adjustment tab. And if I click on the levels thumbnail here, the levels adjustment, that's gonna bring up my levels tool. But now inside of here, you'll see we have a preset and it actually shows us what our image looks like with that preset. So you'll remember I named this DMD1. When I click on this, that's going to now automatically add all of those adjustments for all of the channels to my image. And I can exit out of here, come back to the layers, and you can see there is our levels adjustment. And if I wanted to adjust these settings at any time, I can double click on the little thumbnail here. That's gonna bring up my levels tool and I can continue to make adjustments. 
All right, so that's it for this tutorial on creating levels adjustments. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. You can also check out my website at profotovector.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.